Time to use the exacto knives for some devil's cuts. Hey class, welcome back to the studio. I'm Mr. G, your online art professor. Today's project that we're getting into is some devil cuts. Now, I'm a big fan of the great pottery throwdown. It's on HBO Max. A lot of people can't watch it, so I got a camera. Let's make some videos. Today's project that we're getting into is the Devil's Cut, and that is Keith's term. Most of the time, we just refer to it as carving in clay. Now, this project does require you guys to have an X-Acto knife or use an X-Acto blade for carving into your guys' vases. And the reason that I prefer this to a Fettling knife or any other kind of carving tool is because this gives you a lot more precise cut. Now, if you guys are using an X-Acto knife, one of the, whoop, wrong side. <laughs> If you guys are using one of these, um, I do recommend that it not necessarily be a brand new fresh blade. Uh, the benefits of using a brand new fresh blade are most of the times that when these come out of the boxes, there's a little bit of oil still on them. So they do actually cut through your clay a lot easier, not to mention it's also a fresh, sharp blade. But at the end of the day, you are using that blade on a very uh, wet material and it's going to rust. And if you're going to go ahead and throw out blades anyways, I would use a older blade that has uh, that is a little more dull because the sharpness quality doesn't really necessarily matter with the clay. You're still going to cut through it just fine. It's going to cut through like butter because an X-Acto blade is still a thousand times sharper than a butter knife. And it will be that way whether it's sharp or dull. It's still going to be sharper than a butter knife. And using that in the clay just works really well. All right, let's get into the build of this project. Now for this project here, we are looking at two vases that I made. I made these in another video uh, a while back. So if you guys want to watch that, you guys can check out the ceramic playlist. I'll put the card up in there for you guys. In this piece, we're, we're looking at how to remove pieces of the clay to give us a lantern quality to our piece. Now, as I put, if I put a tea light lantern or a light inside of the inside of the vase here, how is that going to look overall? What is that going to be? The, what's light is going to be emitted from the vase? That's what we're going to need to look at. Additionally, we need to think about how are we going to make sure that the carving is done in the round properly. Now, I have two vases here. That means one of these is gonna get messed up and the other one should look pretty pretty all right. Uh, starting here on that first one, the first one that I've got here, I have a, during testing, we have to walk around and monitor the test, our, our students, uh, but I had this coloring worksheet that somebody printed out and, they, and I thought it was like a cool mandala design. So I cut it out. So I used my, one of my X-Acto blades to cut out sections of this while I'm sitting in the hallway waiting for kids to bubble in a test answer. Testing in general with me is a bag of worms that I just don't want to talk about. So using that template that I carved out during that time, I'm rubbing that on to the exterior of my piece so that I can use that as a carving template. So I can barely see where the lines are on this. I'm trying to carve it as best I possibly can. Using the back of a spoon on the paper, you can still see a little bit of the incising of the clay as it's being pushed through the paper. So it's not a really deep penetrating kind of... So you can see the pattern on the surface of the clay, but it's not a really highly carved in pattern it's just kind of there enough just to see where the lines are um, again if you can make sure that the stencil that you guys are using is smaller than the vase or in a way that you can hold it very easily that'd be my preferred way to do this the the paper kept shifting around that became a really it became much more difficult than i anticipated because the paper kept shifting around uh once it's on there then using the exacto knife to cut out the different sections and what i'm looking at is where am i going to have proper balance as i cut these pieces out if i cut out four pieces here and then the rotation changes and then do four another way i'll still have a good inner and outer circle pattern and then adding into the larger circles from that again I knew that this one was most likely going to be my screw up one. So I'm just trying to go through and just kind of cut through the clay to see what cuts where and, and how to balance things out. Now, once I've repeated this on the other side, then it's coming up with the two opposite sides that are adjacent to these patterns to come up with a, another pattern design. So one of the things that I like to do is to carve these high grass lines. I'm trying to think of the best term to use for these. What I'm doing is I'm taking my blade, putting it at about a 60 degree angle and cutting in one side and then cutting in the other side. So that I have kind of an inward V into my clay. And that's going to give me these nice kind of ribbons that indentation into the piece that look like this. 
okay uh, i love this like wave pattern it gives it kind of like a an on uh, a fire design to it that i like i think this is really cool especially if you come back and you chase this up with a sponge smooth out those lines a little more give it a little kind of buff scrub in those surfaces a little bit that's going to give a little more curve to the cuts that you've done you definitely don't want hard lines with this and the reason being is because when light is coming through those sections that you've carved out you want that light to bend around those pieces you don't want those hard lines because once you do that it's kind of like putting a, a hand over a flashlight where the light just is cut in half and you only get a portion of the light instead of more of a rounded and softer light so it, en it envelops the space that it's in so those are little things that i think about when i'm carving these things uh, but coming back with that smoothing pattern just to give it just to finish it off um, you can see a little bit here of the pattern that I pressed into the clay prior so I can go back and I can smooth this piece out uh, again just using a damp sponge to smooth that out that's going to give you that nice finished quality uh, again I knew that this was going to be my screw up vase but I do like the fire pattern that I got on the side here on both sides uh, the round part here does work for me i do think that this is a nice lantern style uh if i had was able to to do text in here that would be cool too but is it necessary not necessarily and then come up with a really good um glaze color to finally finish this off with now when you guys are doing these things do think about how light is going to interact with the clay and with the space that it's going to be placed in so if you have a um semi-dark exterior you definitely want to have a more brightly colored interior and the reason being is so that when the light is on the inside and it hits that glaze color on the inside so let's say it's a yellow or a white or a chino where it's kind of like it's got those little flecks of uh, manganese have burned off in the kiln in there that's going to give a reflective element to this so definitely anything with a with a gloss glaze give that reflective element it's going to have that light bounce around on the inside so as it pours out of the carving pieces the light is then emanated out more but if you have um depending on how the exterior is also painted that could be contrasting to the light that you guys are going to have so those are the little things to think about as you guys are going to the glazing portion uh glazing on this is really straightforward just kind of paint all over it make sure it's nice and uh, even coats that you guys are doing the big concern is on some of these cut pieces here where the lines are really close together there's or those gaps are really close together if you really cake in glaze there it could seal up that hole completely and it should look translucent in the when it comes out of the glaze firing but 90 time 90 percent of the time it doesn't because the glaze the opacity of the glaze is too thick so that it when it covers up that gap there light really doesn't come through it either so take that into account that as you guys are glazing even thinner coats of glaze will probably work better especially in those more uh closely carved sections all right moving into the second one now for the second cut that i wanted to do i definitely want to have much more of a, a methodical um design where i'm using a ruler over and over and i want to have uh every piece broken down by mathematical segments uh using just the table and rotating the the, the top of the piece across to where i can have line segments inside of the piece so that as i'm carving pieces in there it comes out really well again all i'm using on this one is a ruler the exacto knife and a pen tool and that's just to pull the pieces out again use a pen tool to help pull those pieces out instead of the exacto knife just because uh the pen tool tool is less likely to injure you uh quickly uh you're <laughs> you're not going to really stab your hand self in the hand with a pen tool as, as easily as you would nick yourself with an exacto blade so be cautious on that for this piece carving in more of a gothic church style so i have these nice large um windows that kind of have that vesica pisces style and structure to them uh it's a word of the day right there 20 points on uh, scrabble uh having a nice line cut that that really polishes off those structures and then coming to the bottom half where i really want to have a a, a brick work that has that like undulating over under cuts to them again so i have a nice rotation to them uh, i definitely am a big fan of like a sprocket or a cog in some of my work so it's more mechanical in the way that it's structured but you can easily see the vase designs hello um, but you can see the nice window pieces here so, and then the smaller pieces at the bottom with the pen tool I took and added 
dot lines into there just to finish the piece off. Again, as you guys are creating this, think of the way that you're balancing out the rest of the artworks. Make sure that you're chasing all of your cuts back with a wet sponge, damp sponge, just to smooth out the lines a little bit. Also, it erases some of the uh, marking lines that I put into the piece so that it just is a lot smoother finished, finished, uh, finished off there. Again, don't forget to think about how light is going to be interacting with this piece as light is coming through these windows. Am I gonna see the top of the candle through the window or is the top of the candle going to rest at the lower edge? So as I put in, uh, let's say it's a Bath and Body Works candle, sink that into the chamber here. Is that candle gonna be tall enough to go above the window line or is it gonna be below? These are little things you guys need to think about as you guys are making these carvings because you want to get the best quality of design out of your pieces. I'm gonna expand this up for my Ceramics 2 classes. Uh, they're gonna make more footed lanterns. So there's gonna be a foot piece and then the top piece that comes on and off of like a lidded vessel uh, just to give it a little more elevated process. Overall, good piece. I like this piece, came out really nice. And I love uh, making these lantern pieces. So having these, having my students think about how light is interacting with a piece, how you're using glaze to balance out a piece, using light to help balance out a piece, uh, thinking about where the piece is going to sit, where it's going to live. These are all the things that most artists think about when they're creating the piece. They're not thinking about, I just want to make this cool thing. They're making the the understanding of it's a cool thing that lives here it lives in a specific space that's a, that's a good mentality for all of us to have and uh let's go ahead and wrap up class right there so first off i hope that you guys got something awesome out of today's class wonderful discussion as we always have trying to learn something new educate the masses and that means we need to take care of the homework which is don't forget to like subscribe share all the various platforms want to educate the masses get the message out there to as many teachers friends students that we possibly can uh Making everybody smarter is always much more, uh, that's my thing. Don't forget if you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Later, guys.